All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about bell siphons. Um, so there's, this is one of the things that when I first uh, started looking into aquaponics, I had kind of the most questions about how they work, why they're needed, uh, what, what's all this about bell siphons. So I'm gonna try to, to run through all the things that I found important uh, when I was first setting up the system and kind of talk about what a bell siphon is, what it's used for, what types of materials you need to use, how you need to set them up, give some tips and tricks on how to adjust them and how to set up your system so that they'll work well. Um, just with some things that I found over running this system here. So what we're looking at is um, just a few things that you can use for bell siphons and then some of the components that I am currently using. So I've seen some videos out there with people using pot bottles for bell siphons, uh, one liter water bottles. These are, this is a one liter like Sprite or Coke bottle. This is a regular two liter um, a Pepsi bottle or Coke bottle, whatever you want to want to use. You can use those as bell siphons. Um, what I'm currently using here is this two inch PVC pipe with a cap on the top. Um, that's what I've been using. That's been working great. And here is just a guard um, that I'm using in mine, kind of a rough guard to keep the rocks uh, in the grow bed away from uh, from the bell siphon. So these are just the kind of the components that we're dealing with today. And I'm going to go in a little closer and talk a little bit about um, uh, what the bell siphons are and kind of how they work. Okay, so just taking a step back here from the, the grow beds. I've got one that's empty here that I'll show you the inside of in a moment. Um, this one here is full and obviously growing things. So the purpose of the bell siphon is basically to allow the grow bed to fill completely up to the top with water and then drain all the way out. And that allows air to get to the roots of the plants. If you just filled these up, um, and let the water sit in them, obviously the, the uh, plants would rot, the roots would rot, they wouldn't be able to get oxygen, they would die. Um, the other option, like in hydroponic systems, with different types of setups, you can run pumps that will turn on and turn off so that you, you know, get a fill and a drain type of a thing using a timer on a pump. You can do that as well, um, and a lot of other types of systems have that. With these particular this particular type of system, um, all of these grow beds here, this is a flood and drain system. It's designed to run with a bell siphon. So they're actually pretty neat little devices. And just to kind of look in here, this is my center drain pipe, and I've got it terminated through the bottom of the barrel with a bulkhead adapter. Um, a lot of people have talked about those uni seals and other types of um, terminations that you can use to go through the side of barrels and tanks. Um, I haven't used the uni seals, but I can tell you that since we're filling this grow bed with rock, that I didn't feel comfortable using a non-rigid seal. So these bulkhead adapters, they are more expensive, but these are screwed in and siliconed, and it, I've never had a problem with any of my fittings leaking. So I would recommend them, um, especially if you're putting together a permanent system that you're not going to be taking apart or anything like that. The uh, bulkhead adapter is the way to go. So just a side note on that. But uh, so here's... What we have set up, the uh, grow beds here, the water level is going to fill, and once it gets to the top of this pipe, it would just pour over, and that would keep the water level um, at the top. Um, but using our clear plastic 2-liter bottle here, you can kind of see. So how the bell siphon works is as soon as the water level gets up to the top of this pipe, it starts to pour over and go down the drain. Um, it starts to suck in a little bit of air and create kind of a suction at the top of the, of the bottle so the water level kind of raises up until there's no air left and then it sucks down and starts to siphon. It siphons out very fast and it'll drain the, the grow bed all the way down to the bottom. The water is coming in through some notches that you put in the bottom of, I don't know if you can see that on this background here, let's move it over to something you can see, there you go. So you can see kind of the U-shaped notches that I have on the bottom of this bottle. And that's where the water draws in at, right at the bottom. So it'll suck the water level all the way down to, to the bottom. Now I'm not using these 2 liters or these type of pot bottles. I'm just using this as a demonstration. What I've found works really, really well is just the PVC pipe. And this is just a 2-inch piece of PVC pipe with a cap on the top and some very crude, <laughs> hacked-up notches in the bottom. In fact, when I built these... I said in my first video, these were just going to be temporary, and I was going to make some nice looking ones. Well, these things have worked so well, I just don't see the need. So they don't look great, but they work very well. Um, 
So same type of thing. This sits in, in the water there, and you can't see it, of course, but the uh, water level would rise up to the top, and it creates a suction here, and then um, this works the same way. So um, the reason I don't like using, didn't try using the pot bottles is, number one, I had scraps of PVC left over from the system anyway. The caps are only like a dollar, and these things aren't very rigid, so when it creates a suction, you actually get some flex in, the, in the, uh, this type of plastic, so they don't really work that well. Um, I can't imagine as a permanent solution that they would be they would be that great. But it is a way you could design a system using kind of sustainable materials. So, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill up this grow bed and then show you the the bell siphon in action, and then I'll give you a few tips about uh, how to design the the drain pipe here so that they they siphon all the time. Okay, so I've got the grow bed filled up just to the top of the system here, where it's just about to start the. Uh, the bell siphon so I'm going to just turn the water on here so we can get a little bit of a flow going and this is where kind of all the adjustment that comes in but um, I'll talk about that here in just a minute so as the water starts to pour over the edge of our pipe here it's going to start to draw all the air down in the top of the bottle there and start to create a little bit of a suction. You actually you can see the water level is higher in the inside of the bottle than it is out in the grill bed. It's already, it's already starting to boil over the top there. So it's just about ready to start. Okay, so now the, now the water's flowing over. I couldn't see it from the same way. So you can see the water level rising up in the inside of the container. It's getting higher. And there it's just about started full. There it is. So now it's siphoning at full power, I guess you could say. Um, and you can see the water level starting to drop on the outside now. And this is pretty much, pretty much what it does, and it just does this over and over and over again, all day and all night. Um, and it's a, it's a really neat little, little idea. I'm not sure who came up with it originally. I'm sure it was somebody a long time ago, but um, I found this to be one of the, one of the neatest parts of the system, I think. And when you, when you're first setting your system up and you're going through all this, it's, it's really fun to get these going. So and kind of adjusting them and everything. But basically, the, the only real adjustments that you have to make with the bell siphons, if you have them set up properly, and I'll talk about how these, how you have to, to set these up to work right. I've been running mine for like eight months now, nine months, and uh, I've never had my bell siphons not drain or not stop draining. So those are the two things you have to watch out for. So what can happen is if you have the water on too slow, so if we had the water water incoming water down too slow like that then that siphon will never start it's just it has to have just enough water flow going over the top of the pipe to, to really draw the air down and get that siphon to start so that's the one thing you have to worry about now if you turn on the water flow too much and you're blasting a whole bunch of water in here then what happens is and I'll try to demonstrate this. Once it gets down to the bottom, in order to break the siphon, it has to suck in some air. And so once it starts to suck the air at the bottom, you'll see the air bubbles come up, and then it breaks the siphon, and then it stops siphoning so that the bed can fill back up again. But if you're pouring water in faster than it can siphon out, then it will just, the water level will stay down at the bottom, and it will just continue to siphon water out of your system and it'll never fill again and so your plants will never get water and you'll start to see things wilting and that won't be good so it's really not that difficult to adjust and once you get it kind of set up properly then you don't have to worry about it so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward here to the bottom of this bell siphon here so i can show you what happens all right so we're at the Okay, so we're coming up on the bottom of the siphon here, and it's about to break. You'll see the air bubbles shoot up. And that's, that's it. That's the siphon 
breaking. So um, I turned the water off just because it was at, when I had the water turned on, it was creating a whole bunch of air bubbles, and it wasn't it wasn't a good demonstration. So, um, but if you did have the water flow going too too hard, again that siphon would never break at the bottom. And so that's really your only adjustment, and you just have to play with it a little bit. Um, but I'll take you underneath here really quick, and I'll show you what we have. Um, set up for the underneath of these drains and why that's important Okay, so here's the the drain pipe that I have and this is just a two inch drain pipe It runs underneath all the all the grow beds are up here and they all drain into this pipe So a two inch pipe slope down to my sump Barrel or buffer barrel or whatever you want to call that. That's just where the water um, is allowed to, to fill in pumps out of so but you'll see, you'll notice underneath each one of these barrels that I have a 90 degree angle and another 90 degree angle. And I'll get into kind of some of the specifics on why that works, but if you just have the pipe coming out of your barrel going straight down into a drain or straight down into a sump, it won't tend to start your siphon very well. You have to have your water flow up pretty high in order for the siphon to start. And I'll, again, I'll kind of show you a, a crude illustration of why that is, but... So when you're designing your system, make sure that you have, you know, an elbow on at least one elbow underneath it going over to your drain. And I have two here. It's been that, and again, like I said, this has worked completely flawlessly. I've never had an issue with it. And the other thing that you have to kind of adjust when you're starting your system is how big do you want these holes at the bottom? Um, I've seen people cut slits like with a saw in different places on these. But the best thing to do is to cut notches right at the bottom. This, this allows the water to drain all the way down to the bottom of your grill bed and suck right in from the bottom. Um, that, that does a couple things for you. That helps to remove any sediments on the bottom. Like you can see, I've got some in here. Um, it will, over time, kind of cycle those out and suck right off the bottom and get the, any of the sediments out of the bottom of the barrel. And uh, it also just helps to keep that water level really low, and it also helps to break the siphon at the end. So if you're when you're designing the bell siphon, I would recommend instead of doing like a, like slits, um, cut actual notches or ho drill holes right along the bottom or something like that. Um, this seems to work really well. Okay, so I just want to take a couple minutes and talk about the kind of the reason for having that the extra angles underneath in your drain pipe, um, how that works, and why it's important to get your bell siphons to start and stop properly. Um, so, basically, here's a very crude drawing um, of a grill bed with a bell siphon at the top and then a drain pipe coming down in the middle. And what this shows is when your water level gets up to the top here and it starts to flow over the edge of the pipe, it kind of hugs along the edges of that pipe. And it allows for this air gap in the middle. And Air that in that case can just kind of rush right back up the middle here and it never gets that suction at the top in order to start that, that, that siphon. And so air just keeps coming up here and you have to get your water flow rate really high in order for it to kind of overtake that air flow coming up and get the water to fill that whole pipe and get your siphons to start. So this, this just, I'm not saying it won't, wouldn't work this way but it does require you to have a lot higher water flow and it also makes the bell siphons um, a lot finicky because then you have to have your water flow higher to get your siphon to start, but once it gets to the bottom, then it's very hard to get the siphon to break because you've got your water flow going so fast that it's filling it faster than it can siphon the water out and it just keeps keeps running, and then you've got no water in your grill bed, and then your plants obviously don't like that. So, so by adding those angles in here, uh, what happens is the water will start to flow over the edges of the pipe, same thing, hug along the edges, but once he gets that first elbow or first 90 degree turn, it kind of churns up a little bit, it actually splashes up, and it starts to block that air that's trying to rush back up. And it does the same thing at the next elbow that you have, and uh, the water kind of splashes around in here, and it, and it stops the airflow from coming back up to your pipe. And so you can get that siphon to start right away, because you don't have that back pressure of air coming back in, trying to stop the siphon. Um, this is what I've done, and it has been working great. Like I said, I've never had my siphons not not stop or not start. They they're and they're not really finicky. I mean, I can adjust the water flow real fast or real slow, and they seem to work pretty well no matter what I do. So um, this system is definitely the way to go, from what I can tell. And uh, I would highly recommend that you that you do that with your drain. So don't have your drain pipe just going straight into a sump tank or something like that. Do do the turns in it. Um, so just a little bit about 
you know, how, how should you adjust the flow rates and how often should the tanks fill or the grow beds fill and drain. Um, my system right now is filling, it takes about 10 minutes and 30 seconds for the water from the bottom to fill all the way up to the top. A couple seconds later that siphon starts and then it takes a minute and 30 seconds for it to drain all the way back out to the bottom. Um, that's been working really well for me. I haven't had any issues with plants wilting or not getting enough water. I haven't, and I've pulled a lot of roots out. Nothing looks rotten and um, I haven't had, you know, not enough air getting to the roots or anything like that. So this has worked really well for me. Now something to consider, um, if you have plants that are just starting, like seedlings and things like that, you know, they're just up here at the top of your grow beds. The roots aren't real deep. And so they're only getting water, you know, right when it's at the top of its cycle. Um, so if you have a really young grow bed where you've just planted it out, you might even want to increase your flow rate a little bit so that the, the, you know, maybe every five minutes it fills and drains so that they get water a little more often. That might be a good thing to do. And then as your plants get more mature, like my green peppers here and celery and the Swiss chard and stuff like that that I have, you can probably, you know, cut that water flow down a little bit and increase this time. I could probably increase my time a little bit too, to maybe 15 minutes. Um, because the roots of those plants they're all the way down here at the bottom and so they're getting water you know during the whole fill time and the whole drain time of that of that cycle and, and so it's not as big of a deal so just some tips and tricks about kind of how to set these bell siphons up i found this kind of interesting when i was setting my system up and um so i wanted to share what i learned with with you guys uh, if you have any questions please throw them in the comment section i do try to answer all those questions that you have um, if you have comments, if you already have aquaponic systems, I know a lot of people who subscribe to the channel have aquaponic systems set up. You know, share with us what you're doing. You know, what kind of things are you um, doing to make your bell siphons work? Uh, you know, is it different than this? What, what works and what doesn't work for you? Um, share that in the comments as well. So that really helps me and everyone else out. So um, hit thumbs up on the video if you found it informational at all. And uh, thank you for watching. Have a good one.